The Lindsay Nicole Henry Scholarship Fund for Children with Disabilities Program Act was signed into law in June of 2010. It allows children with special needs on an individualized education program to receive state-funded scholarships to attend private school. Some school districts say the program is unconstitutional and they've challenged the law in court. 12-year-old Garrett Spry has Asperger's. That diagnosis falls into the spectrum of autism disorders. He now attends Town and Country Day School in Tulsa, a private school which teaches children with special needs. He used to go to Jenks Public Schools. They would bully me and sometimes I wouldn't get their humor, I wouldn't get them and then they would laugh at me and I didn't like it. But you don't feel that way at Town and Country? No. His mother, Stephanie Spry, says their experience at Jenks was frustrating. They viewed a lot of Garrett's issues as behavioral problems and didn't see it for what it really was in terms of the way his brain processed information and just the overload that would happen sometimes and, you know, and taking the way he took instructions and the way he processed those instructions didn't necessarily yield the result they were looking for. And so it was just, it just always felt like for him that he was doing something wrong. Kristen and Tim Fisher have a similar story to tell. Their daughter has a high IQ and a photographic memory, but suffers from severe Asperger's syndrome. So she has very low ability to communicate socially. She doesn't understand a lot of the social cues, a lot of the uh, nonverbal communication skills that we all take for granted every day. Obviously that results in some ostracizing by the other kids, some teasing. At the time we left Jinx, she was being bullied pretty well. The counselors were saying she's being bullied in her appropriate response. She's not using appropriate responses to the bullying. In other words, we're not going to stop the bullying. We just want her to respond differently to it. The Fisher family and the Spry family both received the Lindsay Nicole Henry Scholarship for students with disabilities. The state passed the scholarship into law in 2010. It gives parents the money the state would have paid to educate their children to pay for tuition at private schools. These parents say they took the scholarship money because the public school didn't address their children's learning differences. A child with an autism spectrum disorder has a lot of sensory issues, um, overstimulation, the crowds, the noise, they're unable to process information the same as a child that doesn't have this type of a disorder. Larger class sizes only exacerbated Garrett's difficulties. At Town and Country, he is in a class of 10. Garrett is now excelling at school and has become a leader helping other students. F -E -L -L. Once he got there, it almost instantly made a difference because the teachers didn't see the way he processed information or some of the frustrations that he had. They didn't see it as behavioral issues. They saw it for what it was. The Fisher's daughter also attended Jenks. She now attends Metro Christian Academy in Tulsa and is making straight A's instead of C's. Despite happiness that their child is thriving, the Fishers are now carrying a burden they didn't expect. It's upsetting to have a process server show up at your front door with a 45-page uh, stack of documents and the summons and say, uh, here, you've been sued. Both the Jenks School District and the Union School District in Northeast Oklahoma sued the Fishers, the Spry's, and three other families who received the scholarship money. And I don't, will never believe that we're the proper defendants for a legal challenge to this lawsuit. And this is kind of like suing someone's grandmother for participating in Medicaid, it's really not fair to force the families to bear the cost and the brunt of defending the state statute. Eric Baxter is a senior attorney with the Beckett Fund for Religious Liberty, a nonprofit public interest group based out of Washington, D.C. He defended the parents in court. They were opposed by a private law firm representing Union and Jenks. Dr. Kirby Lehman is the superintendent for Jenks Public Schools. My primary objection is it's unconstitutional. Uh, I believe it's Article 2, Section 5 of the Oklahoma Constitution says very, very specifically that public money may not be used for private sectarian purposes. And that's exactly what this uh, voucher program, the Lindsay Nicole Henry Scholarship, 
does. The problem with the argument in general is that the state scholarship program is neutral toward religion. Any school can participate in the program, whether it's secular or religious, and regardless of what religious affiliation it might have. Dr. Lehman argues what he calls a voucher plan results in reduced funding for public schools. While we are only one of many school districts across the state of Oklahoma that are currently struggling with funding issues, we find that re finding reasons to remove funding from public schools simply does not make sense. The Fishers don't agree. That money is, is being designated for my daughter without regard to um, whether she's in a, a public school or a private school. That money has been designated by the state to help for services for her. So Jinx is not losing money that is being used for other purposes. But Stephen Crawford, who is the executive director of the Cooperative Council for Oklahoma School Administration, doesn't see it that way. Special ed classroom of, uh, of a category could have 10 kids in the classroom. Uh, and let's say one child takes the scholarship and goes out and takes the funding with them. Uh, the school still has all the cost of the classroom, the teacher, the textbooks, the materials. They still have, every, there wasn't any cost left the school. Just recently, Judge Rebecca Nightingale of Tulsa ruled in favor of the school's argument that the scholarship is unconstitutional. However, the children already receiving the scholarships will continue with their private educations because the judge stayed her own order until the case is appealed. Baxter says he will appeal to the Oklahoma State Supreme Court in May. State Representative Jason Nelson, who authored the Lindsay Nicole Henry Scholarship legislation, says the case has much broader implications. And there are a lot of other state programs where uh, state money is used at private religious institutions. You've got uh, the OLAP grants in higher ed for kids that go to TU or Oklahoma City University. So by extension, there is no difference in these two populations except for the age of the kids that are students. So you could, uh, under this ruling, begin to sue kids that go to Oklahoma City University or TU or Oklahoma Christian on an OLAP grant. And he says if the Supreme Court rules against the scholarship, then more litigation will follow. If this is allowed to stand, then I would see asking for an attorney general's opinion about how, what this means for all these other programs. State Representative Jeannie McDaniel says if the Oklahoma Supreme Court allows the scholarships to continue, then the law needs to be amended. My concern is this. The kids I know that have popped out into other schools, I've not seen where they ha that school has to provide any feedback that they are providing anything special for those kids. Nor do we have any process whereby the families come back and report if progress is being made. It's just you transfer out, there's no feedback, no accountability for what happens to the taxpayers' dollars. According to the State Department of Education, 149 students have received the scholarship so far at a cost of more than $770,000. The case is expected to take a while to litigate, perhaps enough time for students like Garrett to graduate. The ultimate decision could have far-reaching effects on public schools and their ability to meet every child's needs while dealing with limited and declining budgets.